Hey everyone, it's Josh here. And in today's software tutorial, I'm gonna be giving you a complete comprehensive overview on how to use the Snapchat Ads Manager platform. Today, I'm gonna to give you everything you need to know to get started with your first Snapchat campaign, your first Snapchat ads, and overall getting you more comfortable with using the platform. Without further ado, let's jump right into this boots on the ground tutorial on how to use the Snapchat Ads platform. All right, jumping right into the platform here, we can see, welcome to Ads Manager. What is your business name? I've entered my business name, email, and my name, and we're gonna hit next. It's gonna ask where we do business. So in this case, if we did it in the United States, we'd say United States, we choose our currency, uh, we put our business phone number in and we put our business website, which is optional. And we can also check this. In our case, we're just gonna simply hit next, going right through. And we're gonna see, complete your public profile. Add a profile so Snapchatters know our brand. Now, this is something that you can customize for yourself later, but we're gonna skip through this for the moment. So in this case, I'm just gonna say, create public profile and this is gonna be the username I'm set up with. Now, a good thing to keep in mind here is that making sure your username is something suitable to your brand is something that's gonna be very important. Unlike other platforms like Instagram or Facebook, Snapchat is a lot more of a personalized feel, so when people are gonna be viewing your public Snap profile that you're running your ads on, it's very important that that matches the ad campaigns and the ads in general that you're gonna be running. Snapchat also offers credits here, so we can see spend $50 in ad credit, get $75 in ad credit, or spend $350 in ad credit, get $375 in ad credit. I know Snapchat is a platform that doesn't have as much advertising on it, but the potential is still there and it's a great way to reach your audience if you want a little bit more of a personalized approach. And some would argue that your money actually gets you further there. So in our case though, we're just gonna say maybe later. Now we're moving on to create ads. How would you like to create today? Now there are two options here, a simplified version and a more advanced version. Now, while we won't be going over everything there is to know about the Snapchat ads platform, today I'm simply gonna hit advanced create. Now, if I hit that, we can begin building our first campaign. Now, one of the most important things when you're actually building your first campaign is knowing what sort of thing you are campaigning for. Why are you marketing? What are you marketing? I would argue that the objective is one of the most important parts of the advertisement campaign because it radically changes how Snapchat is gonna actually put out your ads and show them to people based on the outcome that you wanna achieve. Things are gonna be radically different for you if you wanna sell as many t-shirts as possible using Snapchat ads versus if you're, a, say, a law firm that wants to get well-known in the community. Those have two completely different objectives. One wants to make a conversion, one is just on brand awareness. And we can see a whole bunch of different options here. We have things like awareness, which is increase awareness of your brand or product, promote places and promote specific places at Snapchatters. We have things like app installs, driving traffic to websites, apps, video views, lead generation, app conversions, catalog sales, whatever. Now, in our case, we're going to say for the example that we run a Shopify store. So ideally, we would want to sell something. We would want to actually go through the process of making a sale. And if you're a little bit more curious on how to use a platform like that, we have other videos on the channel covering this exact topic. So in my case here, I will select website conversions and we can see here now the objective is set to website conversions. And if you wanna learn any more information about these different types of objectives and figure out which one is really the right one for you, all you would have to do is select that one and hit the learn more button and there will be plenty of resources available for you to choose from. Now that we've set our campaign objective, we can move on to the next step. Here we can see we have the option to create a split test. Now, if you're not familiar with what a split test is, it's basically a way that you on a platform can show two different, albeit the same, but slightly different versions of your ad and see which one resonates with users. For example, if you think one video is gonna perform way better than another video, you can put out everything the exact same, but have a slightly different alteration on how you show that ad. And you can choose which one is gonna be promoted more based on which one your audience is more receptive to. In our case, we're not gonna split test, we're just gonna be focusing on a single ad set and we can choose the start and end date. We can choose March 26, 2024 at the time I'm filming this video or any time for that matter. And we can say, you know, we'll do 9 a.m. tomorrow and uh, we can set an end date, but that is entirely optional. The next thing we're gonna do is set up our daily spend cap. Now, while platforms like Facebook and Instagram allow you to really have low numbers in terms of how much you can spend per day, Snapchat makes it so that you have to spend a minimum of 20 US dollars per day. So in our case, we're gonna set that as our minimum. We also have the ability to set a lifetime spend cap here just so that we can stick to our budget in our ad campaign. In my case, if I spend $20 per day, let's say we're gonna set a lifetime spend cap of $1,000. Now that we've actually got our ad campaign set up, it's time to move on to creating our first set of ads. We've got our objective set up, we've got our daily spend, and we have the dates that we're gonna ideally be running these ads. So if we hit next here, 
we can see that we can set up our first set of ad details. We can set our ad set name, and in this case, it's just United States, all genders, all ages. We can add the Snap Pixel. Snap Pixel and Snap App ID tracking are two entirely separate features that honestly, we can make a whole other video on. So we're gonna skip over these for the moment. But just know that these are a little bit more of advanced ways of tracking the analytics that move off of Snapchat. Next thing we're gonna move on to is budget and schedule. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Josh, didn't we just do the budget and schedule? Well, this is a key difference here. Snapchat has two different sets of budget and schedule, those being the campaign and those being the ad sets. You could run a variety of different ad sets within one singular ad campaign that all have different budgets. Say, for example, you have one that you spend $20 a day on, $50 a day on, $100 a day on, but the overall campaign has a max budget of $5,000. Well, obviously, if you have different ad spends, you're gonna have to control different aspects of that. So we're gonna actually set for this one a budget of $50, and that's gonna be our daily budget. The start and end date being the time that we just set up, and the goal being either story opens in the form of a story ad, clicks, which is in the form of single image or video, story ad, collection ad, and AR ads, and landing page views, which has the available ad formats of single image and video and collection ad. So in our case, we're gonna select landing page views. Now, when it comes to the bidding, we actually have three options here. Auto bid, which is recommended and makes the best effort to spend your budget. Now, this is definitely the strategy for beginners. So I highly encourage you to go actually select this version if this is your very first time using Snapchat ads. But for a little bit more advanced users, we can select things like target cost and max bid. But in our case, we're gonna simply select auto bid and move down to placements. Now, placements is actually gonna have different options available to us. Automatic placement, which again is recommended and I highly recommend it for beginner intro Snapchat ads users. But we also have edit placement, which offers us a whole bunch of details that we have to actually customize where people are seeing our ads. Now, in our case, I'm just gonna leave it to Snapchat to decide where they're gonna place our ads. And so we'll select automatic placement. Locations, this is gonna be where our audience is actually seeing it. Where are they actually physically located to be seeing these ads? We can set multiple countries here, but in my case, I'm just gonna select the United States. Next, we move on to demographics, and we have a little checkbox here that says age restrictions required. Now, that is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just let you read that little checkbox there. And now that we know exactly what we're doing, in our case, our ads aren't gonna be age restricted, so we can see ages. And so we can set, you know, maybe we want people between the age of 25 and maybe 40 to see our ad, okay. Moving on, we're just gonna select English here as our language. And for advanced demographics, we can actually reach Snapchatters based on their education, income, language, marital, and parental status. But in our case, we don't actually have to choose that. But as you can see here, we have tons of things like choosing household income and things of that nature, but we're gonna skip that for now. And now we're gonna move on down to audiences. Now, when it comes to audiences, Snapchat actually has a bunch of predefined audiences already available to us. We do have the ability to go through and create our own custom audience to be exactly who we want or who we think we want to advertise to. But if you're a beginner and are just trying out your ad sets, I highly encourage you to go through and choose one of the predefined audiences. So we have things like crypto enthusiasts, gamers, and we have things like sneakerheads, and we can go through and figure out who exactly we're trying to sell to. So in my case, uh, film and TV fans, and we'll say crime and mystery genre fans. Very specific there. And then we can select different categories and multiple categories at that to actually choose who we're gonna actually be showing our ads to. Now, one of the things that you might've noticed is while we've been actually setting up our ad campaign, we've actually got a little thing on the right-hand side of the screen that says, target audience size with a range of the estimated amount of people that we're gonna be reaching with our ad. And that is gonna dynamically change depending on what we put in here. So in our case, 10 million people to 36 million people, that's a lot of people to be reaching, maybe too many people. So in our case, we don't just want crime and mystery genre fans, we want crime and mystery genre fans who are also bookworms and avid readers. And as you can see, as we start to add more sets of you know, specific criteria onto our audience, we can see here that the audience size is shrinking. Or in our case, it's actually gone up a little bit because obviously we're gonna be reaching new people. But this goes back to one of the very fundamental principles of actually setting up your ads. Make sure that you have a specific person in mind that you wanna be advertising to because advertising to everyone is the same thing as advertising to no one. The next thing we have here is devices. Now, obviously, if you're an app developer who only has their app on the Google Play Store, you don't wanna be marketing your product to people on iOS who can't actually download it. That's why this section here has a little bit of customization so we can actually choose, you know, saying iOS, we can choose iOS version, you know, making sure that it actually actually works. But in our case, assuming that, again, we're still trying to sell that t-shirt or that clothing brand, we're going to just simply select all operating systems. But we have different things like connection, cell, Wi-Fi, things that are going to be needed. 
Or let's say, for example, that you're going to actually be advertising to somebody who is out in public. Let's say you're a restaurant and you want people who are out and about nearby your restaurant to actually see the ads. Well, it's going to make more sense in that case to actually choose cell as the connection type as opposed to Wi-Fi because you're more likely to reach people who are out and about using data as opposed to sitting at home. Now we have the option here to actually select cell and then we have our cell carriers where we can choose a whole bunch of different cell carriers that are available to us. Now, in my case, I'm just simply going to select all. But if we go down to delivery, we can see that the status of our ad campaign will by default be set to active and will begin delivery on the start date and time. Next, we have third party tagging, which is moat and double verify. Well, what does this mean? Again, much more advanced advertisement campaign analytics, but you can add double verify tracking to all ads in this ad set and moat to all ads in this ad set if you know how that works. Moving on from that, in the top right hand corner, we can see here that I've got 11 million people to 36 million people in our target audience size. Now we're gonna move on to next and we're gonna see that our campaign is ready to publish. Now it's time to move on to the most exciting part. We've got our campaign set up, we've got our ad details set up. It's time to actually go and design our first ad. All right, as you can see here, we've got our very first ad that we're gonna actually be setting up. Now we've got the public profile. Again, it's gonna have our profile detail. We're gonna name our ad, we're gonna say Josh's awesome burgers, let's say for example, and we'll say brand name, and this will actually replace the profile name. But again, I highly encourage you to actually have your public profile name match your target brand, because if people go to your profile, they're gonna see you know, either case. So make sure it actually fits you. But if we actually wanted to, instead of seeing Josh Digit, we wanted to see Josh's Burger House, for instance. Put that in here, and then we could put in the headline, come get the greatest burgers in LA. And again, as we're actually going through and typing here, I can see a live view on the right hand side of the screen of what is actually happening. Now, come get the greatest burgers in L cuts off. So in our case, we're going to say simply the greatest burgers in LA. Okay. Shareable simply means that we allow Snapchatters to share our ad with their friends, which I highly encourage you to turn on because ideally you want people to be sharing your ads. And if they're funny enough, people will do that anyway. The next thing we have here is top snap media. Now, what does this actually mean? This is actually going to be the video, the image, whatever it is that you're going to actually be showing Snapchat users, the actual ad, ideally. And you can see the details here. Recommended video dimensions are going to be 1080 width by 1920 height, simple 19 by 16 aspect ratio standard. Now, some important technical details about your first Snapchat ad. You have to make sure that your video is going to be exported in H.264 encoding and is less than three minutes in length. Ideally as well, if you're doing an image, you have to have it in either PNG or JPEG format. That's just how it goes. Now, assuming that we had already set up some ads in the past, if we wanted to use some media that we had already set up before, all we would have to do is hit browse and we could choose from our media files, public stories, save stories, etc., and other pieces of data and information that we've actually done on Snapchat, not just as ads, but as our profile. Now, in our case, because we don't have that, I'll hit create here, and we actually get a pop-up with, as you will see in a moment, something really cool. From this, we can actually choose a customized video template for us. So as we have here, brand logo, messaging goes here, call to action. That looks good, it's got some tomatoes on there. So we'll wait a moment for that to load and we'll actually go through with creating Josh's Burger House's offer. What are we selling? We can also set up things like our logo, our call to action, our messaging, burgers come get them. Our messaging will say, we'll say Josh's Burger House. Okay, now we've got a very basic burger campaign set up. We've got things like Josh's Burger House, burgers, come get them. And we've got a burger here and we've set our icon and the actual background and we can go ahead and hit review. Now the options we have available to us here are either create ad and send a creative library or download video. Now it is gonna take a little bit to actually go and create this ad for us. So I'm actually just gonna hit the send a creative library button and in just a few moments, it should take us right to our next screen where we can actually take this ad and put it here. And as you can see, it's already done. We've got Josh's Burger House, the greatest burgers in LA. Now, while this isn't the best ad setup in the world, ideally, it should get you to be a little bit more comfortable with how to actually use the platform to create your first ad. Or if you're simply uploading a video, again, making sure that it's encoded in H.264, making sure that it's 1080p by 1920, and making sure that it's less than three minutes in length will ensure that you can successfully upload your video and get started with your ad. Next thing we have here is post to public profile, post uploaded media to public story and profile for greater organic reach. This means that not only are you going to be displaying your ad in the form of the ad, but you're actually going to be posting it on your Snapchat profile. And making content on Snapchat is a great way for brands to effectively increase their reach, aside from just doing advertisements. The next thing we have here is our call to action. In this case, 
it's more at the bottom, but we have a whole bunch of different things like, you know, more, order now. In this case, if we were doing the burgers, we would say order now. Now the next thing says switch to standard button color. Now by default, it's automatically gonna take whatever your profile picture color is and make the color of your button that. Now, if you don't want that to be the case, you just simply want it to be white, you can set this to enabled and it will simply set to white. Now we can actually set our website URL smart prefetching, which is basically making it so that we're going to prefetch web views that make loading that mobile content a lot easier for people. Now, this is assuming that you're going to be redirecting to a website and not say your Snapchat profile or somewhere else like an app. And we can choose down here, the delivery status, the impression trackers we want to add on, the click trackers, all the external third party tools that we're going to be using to actually manage this. Now I should mention that this was only for the single image or video. We also have the ability to actually go through and create a collection ad, but in our case, we're not going to do that. I Ideally, we should have gotten a lot more comfortable with how to actually set up our first set of ads and we can scroll down here and if we're ready to go, we can just simply hit review and publish. Now, if we hit review and publish here, it's actually going to take us through and it's going to say there's one item to review. We've got our website conversions as our active campaign goal. We've got the start and end dates, the daily spend cap and the lifetime spend cap. Our goal is website conversions, which I guess for burgers wouldn't be the best, but ideally if you want to convert on a website, that could be done in the form of making a reservation, for example. We've got our draft actions and we can go through and actually edit our campaign at any point, but in our case, we've got our audience set up here as well. People in the United States from 25 to 40. We've disabled a certain set of Snap ID tracking because that's more for more advanced topics. Next, we've got the date set up that we're gonna actually be running these ads and the daily spend cap. This is different from what we set for the campaign. We've got our goal with the landing page view and the placements being automatic. And we can see our target audience size right there. And again, we can show more of the targeting details if we want to. Now, before we actually go ahead and publish our ad campaign, we have to do two very important things. The first one, actually setting up our business address. So Snapchat knows where to bill us. And more importantly, actually setting up a payment method so that Snapchat can actually bill us for real. So once you've got your business address set up and have linked a valid payment method, all you would have to do to get started is hit the publish campaign button at the bottom of the screen. Once you've got this published, your ads are gonna start right away or whenever in the future you said that the ad campaign was actually gonna start. And you have the ability to go through and edit and change these details. Now, keep in mind, once you start a campaign, you are gonna to have to pause it before you can go ahead and change the details. And making sure that you have things set up properly the first time is definitely a must. That's why I highly recommend going back and watching certain sections of this video again, if it is the case that you don't or aren't fully aware of how to use the platform or wanna give it a little bit better of a try for yourself. Now that we've covered the most important stuff, let's get on to some of the features that Snapchat allows us to use to actually make managing our campaigns easier. In the top left-hand corner here, we can see that we're under the create ads tab. But if we click that, we can see a whole bunch of other information that we have available to us. Things like managing the ads, you know, going and seeing the ads that we've already created and assets, event manager, audiences, pixels, apps, catalogs. Now the creative tab is gonna be everything you need to actually go through and create your videos. Things like your images, your videos, your lens folders, creating a lens and filter on Snapchat. And if you aren't familiar with what a lens and a filter is on Snapchat, I highly encourage you to figure that out because you should be knowing what a lens and a filter is on Snapchat because it is one of the most valuable tools in your arsenal as somebody who's actually advertising on Snapchat. And the reason is simple. Snapchat was one of the first platforms to actually have filters and lenses. And although other platforms have tried to adopt it in a similar field, it hasn't worked as well and has continued to be dominating as popular on Snapchat. The next thing here would be your audience insights, the reports, campaign lab, viewing all your analytics about who is seeing your ad. The next tab here is develop, which has camera kit and develop portal, which is a very advanced thing, which if you don't know what it is, I don't think you should touch it because really it's only for developers who want people to sign into their apps through Snapchat. And obviously if you're doing this for Snapchat ads, that's not gonna be relevant to you. And then on the far right hand side, we have things like our business dashboard, our ad accounts, members, billing and payments, public profiles, creator marketplace. If I go back to the business dashboard here and we're gonna navigate away from this beautiful ad that we've just created for ourselves, we can see a whole bunch of information about the Snapchat ad platform and the campaigns that we've set up. Things like verifying our business email, setting our address, adding payment method, showing the ad performance of the ads that we currently have running, all the details about our public profile and the incentives to get people to actually click on and see our business, and all of the details that I just talked and walked through, but on the side here. Things like our members, ad accounts, pixels, apps, shared, user settings, etc. But I highly encourage you to go through and try these out for yourself so you can really get more comfortable with the Snapchat ads platform. And there we go, it's that simple. Now, by the end of this video, you should have created your very first ad campaign on Snapchat, your very first ad, and 
Ideally, assuming the fact that you've connected your payment info and added your business information, publish your first campaign. Now, I highly encourage you to go back and rewatch parts of this video that you may not have understood and actually follow along step by step so that you can understand how to create your first set of Snapchat ads and reach an audience that really can't be reached anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, my name is Josh Mountain, and I will see you in the next one.